on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is embracing the shadow and how it's only through embracing our darkness that we get to really, really embody the light. So before we get started, let's just take a minute to get present and let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen just flooding your lungs and flowing into your bloodstream and nourishing every cell and every organ with vital life energy. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, any stress. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And as you allow that oxygen to fill you up. Imagine that it's sparkling with light and brilliance and energy and moving into and electrifying your molecules and electrons and lighting up all your cells from the inside out. And as you exhale, exhale, any remaining stress, tension, negativity, fatigue. And now let's just gently press our palms together and really softly rub your fingers against your palms and feel that wonderful, wonderful sensation and allow yourself to become present right here, right now to the deliciousness of being physical and being here. Welcome, welcome to new week. I, I get to apologize to you for not giving you notice that I wouldn't be joining you live on Friday this past. Um, my, my mom was in uh, rehab after having been in the hospital and I got to take her home on Friday. So I, I apologize for not letting you know that I wouldn't be here, but it was for a good reason, not a bad reason. And uh, I wanna welcome you back and it's a new week. And we're getting more and more into spring and, and the revitalization, regener regeneration of nature and coming back into its vibrancy and hopefully we are too. So uh, yeah, today we're talking about embracing the shadow. And there are so many ways that we we criticize ourselves and and challenge ourselves and um, and really uh, do do damage sometimes by the way that we evaluate and judge ourselves and and also avoid those parts of ourselves. Sometimes we put too much focus and attention on the parts of ourselves that we we don't um that we don't enjoy good morning good morning robert so good to have you here with us today happy new new week we're talking about embracing the shadow today so um as a path to wholeness so there are parts of ourselves that we judge and that and that maybe we even revile um however until we find a way. Good morning, Suzanne. So good to have you here with us. Welcome, welcome. Until we find a way to, to accept these, these darker aspects of ourselves, our, um, what we might consider our lower uh, drives or impulses, until we find a way to accept and integrate those parts too, uh, then we can't possibly be whole, right? It stands to reason. So, so many of us who are moving toward, um, you know, who are intending a awakening and, and elevation and evolution want to be focused on all the all the goodness right but it's not all sunshine and roses and we know this and we see this in ourselves good morning good morning christina welcome so good to have you here as always everybody thank you so much for joining us it's it's a treat to be with you i missed you on friday but 
as I said earlier, it was for a good reason. Um, so uh, I was bringing my mom back from rehab and she's, she's doing better. She's got her ups and downs, but she's doing better. And um, anyway, so there may be maybe times when we get really angry or we act petty or we get jealous or we even feel vengeful or um, we, we act in ways that we would prefer we didn't um, until we have the, or, or we have done things that we feel ashamed of. Thank you, Christina. I'm glad my mom's doing better too. Thank you. She, you know, she's got her ups and downs, but she's, she's a plucky woman and uh, she's, she's pretty remarkable. Anyway, so um, these, these parts of ourselves, we are all things. We are all things. We are not just, just um, sunshine and roses, as I said. You know, it's not all uh, stardust and unicorns, right? We, we have our aspects that are, good morning, good morning, Dennis. Great to have you with us. Um, we have our aspects that we look to nurture. And then we have these other aspects that we either berate ourselves for or that we try to tuck away into a dark corner. And um, what, I, what I notice is that the things that we consider our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities are often, are often things that are also tied very, very intimately to our strengths. So, for instance, um, we may be, maybe we see a tremendous stubbornness in ourselves and, and see that show up in ways that are not necessarily the most positive. Uh, however, the other side of that stubbornness is a fierce determination to accomplish, it, or to see things through, perhaps you know, a fierce um, determination to do what we believe is right. So, you know, that's, that's, um, that's two sides of a coin. We might see some level of arrogance in ourselves at times. And the other side of that arrogance is the self-confidence that allows us to blaze new trails, for instance. Um, we may s feel like we, um, like we're too um, naive, you know, that, that we get duped because of our naivety or our gullibility. Good morning, Tammy, welcome, welcome. But um, we're talking about embracing the shadow. So, you know, maybe we consider that our naivety is, is, a, is a failing for some reason. But on the other side, that same naivety or that is, is an innocence is something that allows us to perceive incredible beauty in the world you know, to, to give people the benefit of the doubt, for instance. Good morning. Good morning, Gia. So good to have you here. It's wonderful to be here with all of you. I'm so grateful to have this time with you. So we're talking about embracing the shadow. And, and so one way that we can start to integrate these parts of ourselves. Good morning, Andrea. Welcome. It's great to be here with you. Uh, is is to recognize the flip side of the coin. So for instance, maybe we have issues around the anger. Well, the other side of anger is passion. You know, and and it's our passion that that moves us forward and and can 
uh, be very enrolling with other people. The, the, the darker side of that might be anger. So the thing is that as we get to recognize the other side of the coin in these cases, then maybe it gives us a greater inroad to being able to accept that part of ourselves that that expresses in on occasion in not the most positive ways and through recognizing the goodness that's also part of that same energy perhaps we then have more access to it to be able to moderate it and i'm wondering if you guys have any experiences to share in regard to this this uh, light and shadow contrast. I'm not going to say dichotomy because I don't. I don't think it's really a dichotomy. I think it's two. I think it's part of the same thing. It's all one thing. It's just the different avenues through which the energy gets expressed. And so, I think when we can recognize that if we lost if we lost our the whatever it is that's driving the anger for instance well you know what might be driving anger is not just passion it may be woundedness you know there may be hurt behind that and sometimes the anger well the anger is actually a higher vibration than depression which depression is sort of uh, feeling much more at the effect of, whereas anger is expressing. Um, there's there's sadness also that can be underlying underlying um, this the anger. You know there, the, but sadness. Anyway, the, these things are at different frequencies, right? So um, we get to we get to look at every every manifestation has its own contrast and also as we stop judging these aspects of ourselves that we create shame from or we create guilt from as we start looking at the the contrast the the positive aspect that is is founded in the same primal energy perhaps we have the ability to embrace these things and I, i've spoken about this before rather than uh, letting go being westerners we're we're really more acquisition oriented than we are uh, in the letting go phase kind of thing. So um, rather than imagining letting go of the anger, one another way to approach it is to expand to include the anger. And that is rather than disenfranchising these parts of ourselves, expanding to include that, for example, to recognize that that's part of us, when we do that, we recognize not only is it part of us, but it isn't the whole of us. It's an essential part of the whole because as we as we exile these parts of ourselves that we don't revere as highly as other parts, what we're doing is fracturing ourselves. And what we want to do is to become whole. And in our wholeness, we can recognize that no one incident, no one aspect of ourselves is the defining aspect or the defining moment. And unless we say so. And our saying so tilts the focus, tilts the, the um, importance that we give to something and and we can then have an incident in our lives that then becomes the central focus 
uh, of our of the identity that we take on or of our view of who we are, but that's not accurate. It's not accurate in terms of the reality. There is a bigger picture. So Gia says, uh, what I've learned in process of healing anxiety and suicidal thoughts is that there is a lot of suppressed anger that turns inward when not expressed and fear of expressing anger due to imagined consequences sometimes leads to turning it inward and leads to self-harming. And it's not about expressing it as imagined, we can let it come up and then choose our response. It's been so helpful and enlightening when I come across, when I came across my suppressed anger. Gia, that's a beautiful, beautiful, brilliant observation. So what happens is the dynamic that you've expressed here, that you've explained so well, is that when we have anger that we suppress, it turns inward and it turns into depression. And, and, and um, it is just by turning your anger inward and suppressing it, that is self-harming, but oftentimes it shows up in more, even, even more destructive or outwardly observable self-destructive behavior. And so oftentimes underneath the depression that we experience is a rage. And the rage is, at, uh, is often, at least in my experience, the rage that I felt was at suppression. Um, suppression in the environment in which I was living and also primarily, ultimately, ultimately self-suppression. But we learn, I think that self-suppression is often a learned behavior, you know, where we are taught that if we don't suppress ourselves, the consequences are dangerous, sometimes physically dangerous, sometimes emotionally or relationally dangerous. But so we start to learn that we, we, need to suppress our voice, to suppress our own expression, because the consequences are, are too dire. And then we adapt and adopt that behavior ourselves. And um, it's a downward spiral, because if we can't express ourselves, if we can't be heard, if we can't be seen, there's, there's just the, there's an anger about that, a frustration, a deep, deep, deep frustration. And then it moves, it, it can move into depression and resignation and victimhood and, and all kinds of other really tough to navigate emotional situations. So um, thank you for that insight, Gia. It's really, really brilliant. So what is what is anger? Anger is often a, a sign that there's been some kind of violation, and um, it. I think that that's a first response. So Elaine says anger was the feeling most accepted in the family, a mask to fear that was truly present but not spoken of. The triggers adds in facing old feelings and allow one, the triggers, aid, the triggers aid in facing old feelings and allow one to free themselves by giving yourself the right to have your feelings. Exactly. So Elaine, I had a similar experience in my family. Anger was kind of the go-to emotion. And it's very interesting that you identify the anger as a mask to fear that was never addressed. And, and oftentimes anger is a defense from, from having to confront a way to fend off having to confront issues that are 
um, that are threatening. You know, like if, if uh, through anger, I can stop you from confronting me about something that I am afraid to confront or don't want to look at, then, then it's done its job, right? I've been able to fend you off. Christina says, I have in the past been far too trusting. I'm trying to become more discerning without becoming too bitter. Looking back, there were far more warning signs that a person did not really deserve my trust. And I need to be more conscious and trusting of those signs. You, you're, I love what you just said, Christina. You identified the issue and you also identified the solution all in one go there. So we know, you know, we, we get signs, we get, we get signals uh, that something is off. And then I don't know about if this is how it works for you, Christina, but in the past, I would get these really strong signals. And then I would, in my mind, justify, oh, but they're a really good person, give them a chance. You know, I would always see uh, the light in someone. I would always see their goodness. And even if they didn't, even if they told me outright that they were, that they were not who I saw, um, I would say, no, 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 you're a really good person. And, and then they would if things would play out in a way that validated exactly what they told me up front that I wanted to ignore. And so what we get to do is really honor our knowing, honor the signs. And that's one of the things that we talk about over and over and over again here is honoring the signs and honoring our own, our own gut and our own knowing. Gia says, I was surprised that I was holding so much anger and there was nothing so bad that happened to me ever that could lead to such an extent that I could have thought of self-harm. But I realized how I trained myself as a child not to let my anger out. Well, probably because you got feedback in your family that it was bad or dangerous or, or you know, that you wouldn't be loved or any number of other responses that we get when we express anger. And I was always praised and loved and whatnot for never being angry and always being soft. Trust me, I never ever knew I was holding so, so much anger with, within me. I was so scared of losing people over anger. Thank you, Mira, for bringing such topics and help us clean our system. Gia, it is my pleasure. And the thing that, that helps you clear your system is that you're willing to look, you know, that you're willing to do the work. And it's amazing. I too had so much anger. I mean, so I had so much anger that at one point in one of my jobs, um, my employers brought it up to me, you know, that I had anger issues and they were right. I did. I did. And, um, and through work, through um, doing a bunch of work, it actually disappeared. And it used to be my first go-to. And uh, now it shows up every now and then, every now and then. And it reminds me that I still have areas to clear. But sometimes anger can be a very powerful and useful tool. If we can have the anger rather than the anger having us. It can, and as long as, you know, we can, we can use that fire at times, it's a really powerful and important tool. Christina says, yes, Mira, all those things is what I went through in my head. And this is related to being trusting. There must be a good person and looking for good that just wasn't there. Well, it may be that the good was there, but that it's just completely, buried by all these really negative expressions and patterns. And so, you know, I saw the possibility in people. I saw who they could be, but I was overlooking who they were being. And um, that's dangerous. And that's something that I think so many of us that, that are 
working to be uh, awake and aware overlook when somebody tells you who they are listen listen they tell you that through actions they tell you through that through words they tell you that through the way that they treat you you and other people they tell you that in the way that they treat themselves so listen you know one of our one of our subjects last week was listening and and it's it's so important for our well-being is is to listen and pay attention to what is rather than what we want to be you know like recognize what's there instead of what you want to be there like i get that it's that how we manifest is by putting our attention on what we want and desire However, let's also not ignore what's there. You know, we could say, I don't want that cliff to be there and just keep walking and fall right off of it, you know? So I, I want you to be um, respectful of yourselves and recognize, you know, what you know. There are things we know. We get these major warning signs. Jesus says, having anger rather than anger having us. Wow. Yes. Well, you know, there, there is a time when that energy of anger is, is exactly what is needed as long as we don't get caught up in it. And that's, that's the trick with all of this is even, even having joy you know, as delicious as it is to savor, to, to allow ourselves to have it as one of many, many full and rich experiences. And Roslyn, good morning, good morning. And Roslyn says, happy full moon Monday. Ooh, I did not know that. And Monday is a lunar, uh, is a lunar day anyway. So very cool to um, have a full moon today. Thank you for that reminder. Something else to celebrate as we move closer and closer into, or as we're kind of, at least in the US, we're kind of on the East Coast in the midst of, of spring, the blooms on the trees, amazing. Amazing, to, my mom says it's like an impressionist painting this time of year these few few weeks so um to to see all the trees in bloom and the flowers and and all this energy of life just pouring forth into the world and um waking us up from a very very interesting winter you know this winter with covid was certainly one of much greater hibernation than previous winters, you know, where we had sort of a global hibernation. And uh, to be coming out of that and to be coming uh, more to the, for, for many of us, coming to the end of the isolation of COVID. And I realize that this isn't the case all over the world, but um, in the U.S., thankfully, we are maybe seeing the end of, of this crazy COVID era. We can only hope that that's the case. So Elaine says, anger is a way to survive in an experience where you fear you may not survive, that life is a threat. Um, the greater the anger, rage the greater the fear, terror within, these energies will manifest in our lives until it is resolved, mastering the emotional body, a powerful experience in mastery on the journey. It is, it, it, Elaine, always, always adding something really powerful to these sessions. Yes, it is. And, um, anger can be a way to quell a threat you know by expressing that rage um, and that fury it can stop an onslaught 
sometimes. And I have found that to be the case on occasion. Unfortunately, it's unfortunate to have to employ that, but there's a place where the anger can is an expression of power and strength that inspires fear in somebody else or in an adversary. And uh, so it's not just an expression of fear, it can be an expression of power. Um, and, and it's certainly not the only expression of power. It, it's very interesting because I've, I've also heard of situations where in those adversarial situations, um, when, when the person has the presence to be present to powerful love, that, that is the greatest power. Um, it's just a matter of what kind of presence do you have to be able to experience and express that love. So interesting, you know, it's all all different degrees to be able to make that kind of recognition. And Gia says, we have strict lockdowns here in India. I was thinking of you, Gia, because I know that right now there's a horrific, horrific surge of COVID in India. Um, yes, big prayers for our friends and loved ones in India who are really suffering this tremendous surge in COVID. And um, I know that it's bringing support and, and um, assistance from throughout the world to help India move through this, this terrible COVID crisis. So, that's why I said some of us, Gia, and, and I, I wish you and yours health and, and uh, may we stem the tide here of COVID in India and throughout the world. So Elaine says, as I have mastered these fears within me, these experiences do not show up any longer because I don't need them to resolve an inner issue, an inner issue. I'm free to move on in peace and harmony. That's brilliant and wonderful. And congratulations on that, Elaine, because that that's a massive that's a massive transition and transformation in life to be able to move beyond fear, like to to come into a place of true strength and true trust and to move beyond fear such that those experiences that trigger it and trigger anger uh, are, are no longer showing up in your life. So Christina is replying to Gia, prayers, and that's for all of us you know, prayers to, to you, Gia, and to everyone in India. And Elaine says Canada is in lockdown again, too. So let's, let's put our intention and our attention on just clearing the planet of COVID and, and just allowing, allowing health and, and, connection to be present yeah, as we move into spring. Let's, let's allow ourselves collectively to put an end to this COVID craziness and, and just heal ourselves. Let's do this thing. We can do it. We can. And uh, on that note, uh, this is, what if we see <clears throat> COVID as a shadow, you know, because today we were talking about embracing the shadow. And what if we were to be able to view COVID as the shadow? What's on the other side is, is our ability perhaps to, um, to work together to solve what seems like insurmountable issues collectively um, 
Christina says, Michigan is slowly getting better again after resurgence. People got a little too lax in prevention, but after our hospitals got filled again, we're doing better. Well, this, is, this COVID thing has been a very big lesson, a very challenging lesson on so many fronts, so much to, to um, dissect in it. You know, there's so many aspects, things to, to explore and discover as a result of COVID. Um, there's so many, so many tragedies that have come of it and also so many blessings. And um, I, I, I just want so much to believe that we're in the last throes of it. I'm hoping and praying that we are for, for all of us. And um, yeah, so the shadow side, we get to embrace it and include it and learn from it. And by embracing it, it is a path to our wholeness. And on that note, I'm just going to wrap it up for today. This is Maggie and I'm Mira Rubin and this is The Core Connection. And uh, we go live each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page at 9 a.m. Eastern. It's such a privilege and a pleasure to be here with you. I'm just going to read these couple last uh, comments here and ex from Christina, an extra prayer for our overworked medical workers everywhere that have worked such long hours for a year now. I'm with you, Christina. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, it, it's remarkable what, what stamina and dedication our healthcare workers have devoted. And Elaine says, I know all is divine loving light in, the perfect, in this perfection for mankind. And everybody wishing you the, a wonderful, wonderful day. Prayers out to, to our world that, that we move into this next, this next phase of health and well-being collectively. And uh, until next time, so much love and such appreciation for who you are and your expression in the world.